At Ryza Labs, we're really passionate about making it as easy as possible for users to tell great data stories. Google Earth is a fantastic tool for broadcasting these stories out to a broad audience. An often overlooked feature within Google Earth is Google Earth Tours. It allows users to create geography-based presentations of data that can include text, photos, video, and audio recordings. In the past, non-programmers have not had access to some of the more advanced features of Google Earth Tours because they require programmers to edit complex KML code. Ryza Labs offers a suite of tools that make it easy for anyone to create a dynamic Google Earth Tour presentation right from a web browser without touching a line of code. Ryza Insight users can choose to create a presentation from a group of snapshots in a collection or start from just a single snapshot. In this demonstration, I will create a presentation from a snapshot that I have created of prehistoric rock art around the world. I'm then prompted to give the presentation a name and a short description. I now see the snapshot I created in the presentation builder. This tool allows me to see information about my presentation, some buttons to add to, preview, or export my presentation, and then the presentation slide sorter. I'm going to edit the first slide and change some of the configurations that control how it will appear. In the slide editor, I can set the pan and zoom of the map to get the first slide to display just the features I want. Below the map, you'll notice there are other configuration options I can set. The first is the incoming transition. This controls how this slide will load in Google Earth. I can set the transition to be either smooth or bounce. A smooth transition will cause the map to just glide between frames without a drastic change in elevation. A bounce transition will cause the more traditional zoom out and then quick zoom into the map. I also set the number of seconds the transition should take. A lower number will cause a faster transition. The next configuration option is to set how many seconds to hold the slide for. I recommend holding slides for at least 8 to 10 seconds to allow all of the dynamic content to load and give the user enough time to comprehend what they are seeing. The next setting allows me to choose whether or not I would like an info balloon for any record to pop up when the slide loads. I can only select one record per slide to open. To set this, I click the info button and then the record I would like to open and choose select for this slide. I can also choose to have an audio file play when the slide opens. All I have to do is type in the URL of the mp3 audio file I'd like to have played. If your audio file is a longer duration than you set in the hold this slide for configuration, it will keep playing until it's done, even as the next slide opens. I can also choose to have an image displayed on the slide over the map. I just have to type in the URL to the image I want to display, and then choose where on the slide I want it to appear. Once I have these configurations set, I just hit save to go back to the presentation builder. If I want to create another slide using the same snapshot, I can just click the duplicate button and configure the new slide how I want it to appear. I can repeat this process to create a slide for all the items I'd like to display in my tour. I also have the ability to add a new slide, which allows me to add the slides from other existing presentations or individual snapshots that are in my library, or I can upload an existing KML tour from my computer. When you upload a pre-existing KML tour, it appears as one slide and will retain all the configurations it was created with. Once I have the presentation built the way I want it, I can either preview it or download it as a KML tour. It's just that easy.